Now, one of the things that has been alleged quite a few times over the past month or so is every time uh, Dogecoin goes on some ridiculous run, the accusations are that either it's hedge funds pumping and dumping in order to generate capital, um, uh, they're attempting to make it look like they've got more assets on their books than there is, or it's uh, a distraction being created to, you know, get the apes away from GME, basically. Um, those are like the three main accusations that get pushed. What are your thoughts on on the idea that, that Doge may have been pushed as a distraction or just as a way for hedge funds to like generate some cash at the moment? I Anything that I say is likely... So one, I'm not investing in Doge. So I want to say that I'm saying trying to speak from like a arbit arbitrary point of view. Uh, but speaking from that point of view, I haven't done enough like actual research into who owns Doge, even though you could, right? It's the blockchain. You could try to figure out, you know, how many of these wallets end up uh, belonging to a, a BlackRock or another long whale in these uh, cryptos. But what we do know is that the sell-off today, mainly uh, from these cryptos, was from institutions. Right. You don't see this kind of behave, uh, retail behavior that can drive this kind of price action data. So that means that we have, uh, we have these institutions buying into these cryptos, and then when the margin call gets close, they kill the fattest cows first. And the fattest cows of any investment is always going to be the volatile cryptos. Right? Mm -hmm. You don't know what they're going to be tomorrow. The next one is going to be the, the blue chips, which is the, the opposite reasoning, which is that you know exactly where Appalachians are going to be tomorrow. So they'll still be here when, if you sell them today. Uh, that's the reason why we see that kind of like triaging of a red when we see a market downturn due to margin calls. That's mm -hmm. been the hot topic. So we want to be able to kind of feed that in there. Cryptos are a tool for everyone. Uh, and the, the end of the day, if you, whether or not you believe in the asset, whether or not you believe in the, the joke nature of Doge, uh, it ends up being a way that you can fuel up for a GME and AMC rocket. So if you, it's all about intention. If you don't intend to make good on your, um, like if you don't intend to try and take Doge and implement it in the right way for your meme stock, then you are, you are a different creature than the person who would be distracted by Doge. Mm. That's a very good point, actually. I guess it's kind of, it's quite a binary way to look at the world. This is like that we're we're all, we're only able to focus our energy on one investment. That's all we're capable of. Exactly. <laughs> mm. So you're basically saying that the the sell off across the board today on crypto is is the way, the only way it would be possible is institutions offloading massive amounts of liquidity in order to to well theoretically deal with the margin calls that are coming in because retailers don't sell all at once at this exact moment <laughs> we are we are facing liquidity issues across the board right there was a liquidity test today uh that is a simulation of just how badly these institutions are gonna are, are going to mess up if these new regulations are going to be put in place mm -hmm. so we have governments cracking down uh, criminal investigations for these hedge funds are starting to come underway. Like these, uh, as conspiratorial as some parts of these subreddits can be, you know, in in your heart that these institutions are doing criminal activity. Like your your dad could be doing a mom and pop like uh, tax evasion. Now, like it, you, can, you can't imagine that a large institution is doing the same, trying to get away as much as they can. But they're certainly trying to. But now they're trying to get away with uh, something that millions of, of Americans, millions of, of people across the world don't want them to get away with. And, and that's a different issue than trying to, you know, pay with Venmo or PayPal and, and make a little bit extra off of, uh, uh, of a cash transaction versus a credit card transaction. Mm. What are your thoughts on, on Gary Gensler as, as a SEC regulator or head of the SEC? Uh, have you been... You know, is, do you feel positive about the the reforms that he's at least um, sort of making moves towards? Gary the man. Uh, so I have Gary's test of uh, um, what he testified in Congress last week, slowly rolling through my mind right now. And the main points he talked about was he mentioned crypto. Right? He mentioned that crypto could have a place in the, uh, the exchange world very soon because uh, all the 
uh, DTCC guy could say is T plus one, right? T plus one, like let's get T plus one because at the very least that's um, acquiescing to part of what the market wants, right? They want uh, Robin Hood's liquidity issue to never happen again, right? They're, they're, uh, we don't want to be stopped in the market from accessing and buying uh, the stocks that we actually want to at crucial points. So Gary Gensler wants to come in and be the politician. And I think at the end of the day, he one has the experience to make the right choices, but unfortunately, too, he has the like uh, cunning of a politician that knows exactly what to say. For example, when we had um, Rashida Tlaib come in and ask him uh, like just the questions about uh, like very closely related to the, uh, the what is going to come next and what is this SEC prepared to do, he was essentially stunned. He he essentially didn't have a concrete plan ahead of time to prevent something like this from happening again. So I don't remember the details of that specific the top of my head, but I remember him like not being able to politician his way out of it. Mm-hmm. So there's there's plenty of reason to not trust him, but I think that he uh, his track record speaks for himself as like someone who can be on our side. So we should accept him. Accept him, tell him that we're all watching you. You know, we have the best hopes that you have the best intentions. Do you think that the amount of attention is increasing the likelihood that we get like a fair like quote unquote outcome here that the that the market is essentially allowed to function as it should do you think the amount of attention and eyes on every little move that's happening like not just in america as well like there's it's 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 global like gamestop is the most tr- like held stock in in dozens of countries it's completely insane <laughs> like do you think that that's that's helpful in uh, to us all really who are, who are just sort of hodling do you think that's yeah it's uh okay so the, i i first thought you meant like is this helpful for the, the world and i think like this is necess- this is a necessity for the world to be able to finally have complete democratization over this market uh, if everyone had a say over what to buy like and have the financial education to actually play at the big poker table right the, the no limits table, the big the table where you can actually subs, like subsist off of and eat from, uh, that would be helpful to millions, if not billions of people across the world who have, didn't think that they could. Now, is that helpful to the squeeze? That is a definitive uh, no, because we saw retail traders coming in and then with their naivety uh, in January, uh, selling off and hurting the squeeze, the worst way possible, day trading, right? Getting scared, uh, falling for the tricks that hedge funds, the short whales are implementing day to day. And as much as this YouTube channel tries to like show you like this bombshell and this revelation and this explanation, there is still hundreds of videos on my channel that, uh, that you couldn't sit through in a single day. So at the end of the day, it's about availability as much as um, a light bulb memory. It's about uh, presence. Of this information so they can just easily stop doing a specific type of attack for a week and apes might just forget uh, that we see a, a red day that's not an indication that the fight has been lost mm. i mean my perception of of what is good in a market has been destroyed by this entire saga not that i was particularly well versed in investing before but normally my thoughts were you know, investment goes up, you should be happy. Investment goes down, oh dear. But now it goes up, I'm like, woohoo. And then it goes down, and I'm like, buy the dip. <laughs> I thought you should think about it. If, like, if everybody had, like, a perfectly, like, accounting brain, and you should think about, like, the snakes, the snakes and ladders of the world, right? You're not, if you're going to buy and then continue buying at advantageous points until you die. And then when you die or you retire, whichever one comes first, uh, you sell. And it didn't really matter, right, where you bought in. The main point is people need to understand that the roller coaster of the day-to-day trading is exciting. It makes for good YouTube, but it isn't actually the, the main point of the macro picture. Right? You look back at AMC and you think it might have a bad day one day, like one day. And then you back uh, like four days and you see that it's been up 30%. Right. That's the same. If you just think about that within one day, AMC barely rose 30 percent today. It was up 35 percent. Then it went back to 24. Right? Because that happened in one day, everybody got insanely hyped about the stock. 
well, just think about it in a week. If we could consolidate that price action to just a week's long time, I would take a, a still boring day every other day of the week. Mm. If only we could start thinking about it in like outside of the fourth dimension, outside of the temporal axis. Mm, that's a really good point. Like the 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 kind of the roller coaster ride of of day trading can be fun, but it's also what people are talking about when they say, you know, you can get sucked in and and watch the markets too much and then lose a lot of money attempting to time things that no one has any idea on. Whereas, exactly. you know, there, there is still something to be said for searching for shout out to Roaring Kitty, deep fucking value. Uh, <laughs> name on my show. I can only say uh, DFE. Mm, yeah, I don't care. I, 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 I'm from Ireland, so I swear too much anyway. <laughs> so I just decided at the start of, of making this podcast, I was like, look, I'm not going to try and censor myself. Um, it's it, There's no point because it will just, I will... I will not, I will fail one day and then people will get mad. So it's just easier to not. (laughs) Thanks so much for listening. If you enjoyed the show, please subscribe, follow me on Twitter or sign up to our mailing list. Thanks a lot to our sponsor, ExpressVPN, the number one most trusted VPN. Get lightning fast connectivity with servers in 160 locations across 94 countries. Keep your browsing privacy safe with ExpressVPN and get a 35% discount on 12 months of ExpressVPN when you follow the link in the description below. Don't forget my book is now out and available to order on Amazon and on bookshop.org. That's Brexit, the Establishment Civil War. And most importantly, thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.